Hi, this is Dr. Tori McJunkin. I wanted to talk to you today about spinal arthritis. And there's different kinds of arthritis. The kind of arthritis I'm going to be talking to you about is called osteoarthritis. Osteo means bone, and so this is the kind of arthritis that's like wear and tear arthritis, or bone-on-bone -bone friction type arthritis. There are other kinds of arthritic conditions like rheumatoid arthritis, um, that are that have a different etiolo etiology or different cause than bone on bone arthritis. That's what we're going to focus on today is spinal arthritis, uh, mainly in the form of osteoarthritis. Uh, arthritis comes from uh, two words, and they're both Greek words. One is arthrosis, and that just means a joint space, and the other is itis, and that means inflammation. So you've heard of different itis as pancreatitis and um, those are just an inflammation of whatever specific thing comes before. So osteoarthritis, inflammation of the bone itself. Um, there are every, every joint space, um, and it's specifically the ones in the spine, uh, there are two bones that come together. Between them are cartilage surface, um, and then you have a little bit of synovial fluid in there that lubricates that joint. Now, certain things um, can cause more arthritis in the spine. So anytime, like we talk about whiplash injuries or traumatic accidents, or even sports type injuries or falls, any of those things have the potential to cause arthritis. Arthritis usually doesn't occur like that. It's usually something that takes a little bit of time to occur, but flare ups of arthritis can occur uh, like that. And oftentimes people when they have arthritis say that they feel really stiff getting out of bed and they have to stretch and loosen up and then they start to feel a little bit better as the day progresses. On the flip side of that, they also can feel like as they start to move more um, towards the end of the day that their body starts to fatigue. And so specifically spinal arthritis, they'll feel like they have more pain uh, after moving and uh, being active. And so usually towards the end of the day or towards the beginning of the day, people with arthritis often, oftentimes will feel like they have pain. I'm gonna show you on the spine model exactly uh, exactly where arthritis occurs. I'm going to come up real close. But this is the small joint here called the facet joint. And that's where people get arthritis in their spine. Um, and so we also call that facet arthropathy or arthritis of those joints. Now just like any kind of arthritis you can get bone spurs. So as the joint, the cartilage tissue begins to degenerate, the bones start to rub together more. The bones start to enlarge, so you can get enlarged joint spaces there, just like any kind of arthritis. You can get bone spurs where part of the bone will grow off, and muscles connect up to this area. If the, grow, if the bone uh, grows quite a bit more, it can come into this area called the neuroforaminal space, uh, where the nerve root exits. So instead of like a bulging disc, you could have arthritis that's compressing from uh, the back part and pushing onto a uh, nerve causing like a sciatica type of pain. Most of the time, just traditional arthritis, people will feel pain in their back for, uh, for lumbar arthritis and their buttock area, down into their hips, and then even going down into their leg a little bit. Usually it doesn't go past the knee. And then for cervical arthritis or arthritis in the neck, oftentimes they'll feel pain here. Uh, sometimes it'll go up for, for the higher joints, it'll go up into the back of the head and cause headache type symptoms. And then for lower down cervical arthritis, it'll go down into this area or even down into this area, kind of uh, between your shoulder blades. And you can get arthritis at any area in your spine, the cervical, the thoracic, mid-back area, or the lumbar spine can all get arthritis. And then in fact, you can get arthritis even below the lumbar spine in the sacroiliac joint, uh, which I know we talked about before. What can you do if you have arthritis in the spine? Well, you know, I think there's a couple different treatments that could be beneficial. Uh, obviously, you might start with conservative care, so things like physical therapy, exercise, stretching, strengthening core muscles. I think those things are really, really important. And what we know now is the the more you use it, the less you lose it. So um, we want you to be really, really active. Um, and so we want you to stay as active as possible. In the past, we told people, if you have pain, oh, stay in bed, take it easy, let your body heal. Uh, but what we found is that people who are more active, active tend to do better long term. So great activities for people who have arthritis are typically uh, non-weight bearing activities, like swimming is a really great activity. Um, and it you know loosens everything up, which is really good, and that's what you want. You don't want things to become more stiff, more rigid. 
Um, anytime you bend, especially when you extend your spine back like this, it activates those joints. And when you rotate your spine, it activates those joints as well. Other things that can cause arthritis would be degeneration of these discs themselves. Uh, as those discs start to shrink, the joints in the back have to take up more of that uh, weight bearing activity and that can lead to arthritis. Uh, the same thing uh, in reverse can happen. They think there may be an association with arthritis and degenerative disc disease. Uh, we were talking about treatments for arthritis, so conservative care, physical therapy, acupuncture is something else that many people benefit from, uh, massage therapy is something that a lot of people benefit from, uh, strengthening the muscles, the ligaments, the tendons, those are beneficial for a lot of people. Things like TENS units, which is electrical stimulation, you put on a little electrical sticky pads, uh, can be really beneficial. It's not a medication, and for a lot of people, they can use that on the go when they're traveling or at work, those kinds of things, so they can think clearly and do what they need to do. Um, of course, when we talk about medications, anti-inflammatories are often discussed. Uh, those, of course, are broken down by your kidney, so those would be like Advil or Aleve. Um, those are broken down by your kidney, so you don't want to have, you don't want to consistently take those all the time. Your kidney has a lifetime amount of those kinds of medicines you can take. So if people take too many of those medicines, they can get kidney failure or renal failure. So you got to be really careful with those kind of kinds of medicines, but for some people those are really beneficial. They have topical applications of anti-inflammatories too. So those would be like topical rubs that you can rub on your specific area of pain, and for some people that will be beneficial. There are other kinds of uh, rubs too, like BioFreeze that use menthol, and for some people those are quite beneficial. Um, but let's say you've tried all of the conservative things and you still have pretty severe pain. Well, there is an interventional type of treatment that we do, and this is kind of the definitive treatment for uh, spinal arthritis. And it's one is diagnosing that the spinal arthritis is the cause of pain because there's a lot of different things that can cause pain uh, in your spinal column area. Um, and then once you've diagnosed that, and the way that you diagnose it really is called a medial branch block, and more and more uh, insurance carriers are requiring that we do what are called double diagnostic blocks. And that means you do one block where we numb up the little joints, and then typically a week or two later you do it again and make sure that it works. Um, and it has to provide significant relief. In the past we said 50% relief pain uh, right after the block, and it's usually the duration of the local anesthetics. For, so for anywhere from three to 12 hours typically would be the duration of local anesthetic. So we wanna see, can you move better? Uh, do you feel better? How is your pain feel in that certain area? Uh, a lot of the companies now say you need 75 or even 80% relief to proceed uh, onto the next step, which would be radio frequency. I'm gonna show you on the model here uh, where we accomplish that kind of procedure. So I showed you the joint right here, the facet joint, and you can see that one pretty nicely there. Out on the side here is something called the medial branch nerve and it runs right in this area here in this little groove. And there's the transverse process and the superior articular process. So it runs right between those two. The, the nerve above uh, innervates that joint and the nerve at that level innervates that joint. So it has double innervation. So to treat arthritis in this area, we'd have to treat this area and this area. To do the diagnostic procedure, you would numb up this area and this area. Watch and see if the pain feels better. To do the radio frequency, you'd lay your needle right there. Uh, you'd test to make sure you're on the right area. You don't want to be next to these nerves here because those provide uh, power and innervation to the lower extremities. And then once you're in the right area, you numb that nerve up, numb that nerve up, and then you cauterize those nerves, and that's the radio frequency procedure. So for a lot of people with arthritis, this might be something that they struggle with almost every day, where they say, you know what, I have neck pain or headaches or pain in my back pain in my butt, that happens all the time. This is really severe and debilitating. Um, first, you wanna try the conservative things. And oftentimes, it's not just, oh yeah, I tried physical therapy and that didn't work, now I wanna try this. It's a combination of I wanna do physical therapy, um, that didn't do what I wanted to do. So now we're gonna move on to the next step of interventions where we try the blo branch block and then we try the radio frequency. But you still wanna incorporate all the other things that you learn back in therapy uh, because you want this to last as long as you possibly can. And you wanna be as loose and limber as you possibly can too. And we believe those things will help uh, to give you the longevity that you want and to give you you know, the uh, the power to get through your day uh, with less pain and to do all the things that you want to do throughout your day. I hope this talk on spinal arthritis has been beneficial for you and thanks a lot for watching.